Hey everyone, hope you're doing well in a new year now and uh, it's good to get out again. I mean, I, I do get out quite a bit, but just not enough that I can film, you know, I'm only out for an hour or so. Uh, but I've got some free time this evening, so I thought I'd get out and make a new video. Nice being in a new year, the pandemic stuff's all died down, lockdowns have come to an end, no more restrictions, everything's back to normal, so we can look forward to a, hopefully, happy 2022. Vladimir Putin has ordered his country's nuclear forces to be on high alert amid tensions with the West over his invasion of Ukraine. Oh, bollocks. Crazy how quickly things can escalate. Who would have thought back in 2019 that a few months later the whole world would shut down? And now who would have thought we'd be this close to potential World War III, which would lead potentially to a nuclear war. And I don't want to scaremonger, I'm not saying, oh God, we're on the verge of World War III. You know, there's a lot of prepper channels I've noticed that over the last two years, since the pandemic started, almost every video is, the worst is about to happen. It's about to get even worse. It's about to get worse than it was before when I said it was going to get worse. Are you ready for what's coming next? Because it's going to be even worse. And every single video is titled like that for the last like two years, um, which is just sort of, same sort of fear mongering the media do to get views it's just clickbait uh, and you know you can have a title like that for maybe a couple of videos but when it's pretty much every video for two years <laughs> it just becomes meaningless just clickbait um so i'm not saying oh, we're on the verge but we're closer than we've been for at least 30 35 years and quite quickly really even though russia have been pushing it for a few years now it's quite quickly escalated to the point where a lot of governments now have within a few days been like right we need to spend more on more on defense more on the military so they're obviously worried and there's been quite a lot of uh, shipments of military equipment and pp you know um kind of radiation protective gear in europe so very quickly they've, they've become worried about the situation and how it might escalate so we'll see but i was watching a film I've watched it before and I've mentioned it before called Threads. It's about a nuclear attack on the UK. I'd recommend watching it if you're that way inclined, if you're into sort of disasters and prepping and stuff like that. Uh, and it, it basically starts off pretty slow. You're just following this regular young couple. They're buying the first apartment. They've got a baby on the way. But in the background on the TV, on the radio, there's all these news reports about Russia and how they're invading another country and all this escalating tension. And the news reports in the movie are very similar to the news reports we're actually seeing on TV now. And then obviously in the movie it escalates to the point where nukes are fired off. And, yeah, it's quite a nihilistic film. It's, uh, you've got to be in the mood for it because <laughs> it will depress you and it will probably make you think I don't really want to survive a nuclear attack I don't think, <laughs> I think I, I'm happy to go with the blast uh, but yeah it's an interesting watch for anyone who uh, is sort of interested in prepping and, and getting an idea of what a nuclear attack might be like because when I first saw the movie when it was repeated on TV years ago I was at an ex's house and her dad walked in her dad was in the military and uh, he said oh this is just like the training videos that we were shown in the 80s so it's quite close to what is believed to be the reality of if there was a nuclear attack on the UK at least back in the 80s those things might change a little bit now um, but an interesting thing as well is that if there was a nuclear attack on the UK apparently we don't have any air raid sirens anymore apparently it would go to everyone's mobile phone it doesn't matter if your phone's on silent or what every single phone would apparently get a alert come up you know and, and uh, sound alert even if you've got the sound turned off apparently i'm not you know it's kind of hard to get concrete evidence on this but what from what i could tell we would all get alerts on our mobile phone saying incoming basically you've got three minutes to say your goodbyes or dive under the desk because um you know back in the 50s we were told that would protect us from a nuclear blast It's surprisingly warm today, which is nice. It has been all week, actually. It's still a bit of a breeze. We've had some bad winds in the UK uh, for a week or so, but they've all died down now. But I definitely didn't want to come out in that because there were a lot of trees, especially in this woodland. Trees tend to come down quite a bit, uh, so I didn't want to risk being crushed by them. But it's all settled down now. Really quite beautiful, uh, and I, I'm ready for it. I need summer now. I'm always, uh, by, by March, I, you know, I get really impatient for summer. I want to go out canoeing, I want to go out cycling and that. Uh, especially because it you know, helps burn off some calories and I need to do that. But I just don't enjoy it so much in winter, I've got to admit. 
Um, coming out in the woods like this I still enjoy, but cycling and canoeing in that, it's definitely a summer thing for me. <coughs> but one of my bug out locations was, well it still is, close to a place I used to work years and years ago, like 10 years ago. Um, I worked at an orchard, fruit farm, it's a beautiful place to work because it was basically like working out in the woods because this guy he owned acres of uh, land that he had apples, pears, plums, cherry trees all growing so it's just this lush forest of fruit trees as well as polytunnels for strawberries and raspberries and stuff like that um, but the first couple of years I was working there he used to supply the local Tesco's which is a UK supermarket uh, it's because he was about three miles away from the local Tesco so it makes sense three miles away locally sourced to fresh produce but by the third year I was working there Tesco's stopped ordering from him because they were getting it all from Europe. Uh, I don't know the reasons, I don't know if it's because of trade agreements in the EU, I don't know if it's because it was cheaper from Europe or if it's because Europe could supply all year round because of the warmer climates but it, even at the time I thought how sad it was that rather than getting locally sourced produce from three miles down the road they were importing it from hundreds of miles across the sea uh, so he gradually started cutting down more and more of his fruit trees which was sad to see um, but I mean I haven't worked there for years but the other day I drove past there and I knew he'd died because he was pretty old when I was working there let alone now and uh, you know sadly he and his wife had died and uh, now the whole lot has been chopped down and yeah it was really sad to see it's just a big empty field now which I'm pretty sure is being left to eventually be developed I wouldn't be surprised if in 10 years time that land has been churned up, concreted over and had one of these claustrophobic new housing estates put on there uh, which is really sad to see and especially you know in this situation we're in now where we're, you know, we're losing a bit of our supply chain because of what's going on in the world you think god what a waste that we had all this food that we were producing all these different fruits that were being produced there and we destroyed it all it was because people would rather buy it from abroad for whatever reasons I understand the need to have these connections with foreign countries because it keeps us all, you know, if, if we need each other to supply each other with things, we're less likely to start firing missiles at each other. Um, but at the same time, this country has become so unself sufficient, uh, if, that's, if that's the term for it, you know, we're, we're packing more and more people into this country and then we've got less and less ways to, to provide for them less and less ways to provide simple thing like food, let alone fuel and energy. So as well as it being just sad for me on a nostalgic level that this place I used to love working really and being in, um, it's just all gone now. Uh, it's, you know, what a waste that that source of food has gone that could have provided for the local community there at least. And with prices the way they are, Jesus Christ, £1.65 I've seen petrol going for now at a fuel station along the dual carriageway. One sixty-five. There's one fuel station near me that's still selling it for one forty-nine. They're always cheaper than everywhere else, so I've managed to fill up there and fill up my jerry can and a couple of jiffy cans. But Jesus Christ, one sixty-five. I won't be long before all the fuel stations are going that way. Overnight when the war started in Ukraine, uh, the, my closest fuel station went up by five pence overnight because of what was going on. I've got to say, it's nice seeing strong, stoic men being celebrated in the media because so much media in the UK now is constantly pushing for men to be more effeminate and, you know, there's sort of poncy types to be fair all the time uh, it was nice seeing you know these sort of stoic brave men in Ukraine whether you support what they're doing or not you know I think we can all agree that they're the people there are being pretty pretty brave and, and patriotic in defending their country and it's the kind of thing I wonder would it be like that in the UK because there's so many people in the UK even institutions or even politicians even the British Broadcasting Corporation act a bit embarrassed about being too patriotic um, or deem, you know, brand it racist or whatever. And I'm not a particularly patriotic person, 
I'm not the sort of guy who would have a flag flying in my back garden or whatever. But at the same time, because there's so much anti-patriotism now in this country, I kind of like it when I do see people who have the flag in their garden. I can actually see a British flag from my house. Um, and like I say, it's not something I'd put in my own garden, but I do like having a view of one that I can kind of salute every morning. <laughs> there's planes flying over now from the local air base. Uh, there's been a bit more activity, I've noticed. Not, not too much more, but definitely noticeably more planes, like military planes, flying around and doing training exercises or whatever. <clears throat> I love it here, it's my favourite spot in my area, it's really beautiful but it does. It is reasonably close to an air base and reasonably close to a main road so you do get a bit of noise from both in the background. I've been spending quite a bit of time outdoors now. Most days, actually, I managed to get out um, even just going for a walk. But I'm, I'm never sure whether to film it or not. So if you guys get bored of just me wandering around, musing on things. Uh, but as I mentioned in my last video, I've had a real bee in my bonnet over the last few months about uh, how urban areas now are just overly monitored. It really bugs me. Um, you know, I like a sense of freedom out here. But even I've noticed, I don't know if anyone else has noticed this, but there seem to be more police patrolling around now than there used to be pre-pandemic. Like before, I would hardly ever see a police car, but now almost every time I leave the house, I see a police car patrolling around. I don't know why that would be. I don't think the police have been given more of a budget now to be able to afford to do this. So why are they all of a sudden swarming around all over the place? I don't know if it's because the powers they felt they were given during the pandemic have emboldened them, that they think they can just go around now kind of pestering anyone they like really without repercussion. But there's, there's definitely going to be more of them around. I also get tired of these uh, community speed watch people. And I'm, I'm not even someone who speeds. It's not that I want to go whizzing through towns and villages, but when I'm just going for a leisurely drive or I'm going about my business, it just pisses me off if I you know, turn a corner and there's some arsehole pointing the speed gun at me, desperately trying to catch me out. It's like, just fuck off and leave people alone for Christ's sake to get on with the business, God. It always seems like, uh, you know, sort of Jobsworth's Karen types who don't really have much else to do with their lives anymore. So they go out there to give themselves a sense of uh, empowerment or whatever, you know, give themselves a sense of purpose to try and sort of catch people out. Especially when it's on a Friday afternoon, I think, when people have been at work all week desperately trying to scrabble together enough money to survive with, you know, ever-rising prices, and then there's some arsehole trying to catch them out if they go two miles over the limit or whatever. Just leave people alone, for Christ's sake. And it always seems to be in places where there are never any accidents as well. Right, so there's really no need to have it there other than just as a attempt to try and get more money and for people to use it as a hobby and I've noticed the people who do it the the, the volunteers who do it who don't actually dish out fines they just send you a letter that you can just sort of throw in the bin um, my dad got one uh, but they they never do it I've noticed they're never there when it's raining when it's snowy or icy they only ever do it when it's perfectly nice fine conditions not too hot though but if it's warm and it's bright so they can go out there when it's nice and comfortable and do it they never do it when you think well it's wet it's icy maybe people do need to go a bit slower maybe it'd be safer if people do go a bit slower now no they're never out there in those conditions just treat it like a hobby and as I say, it's not that I want to speed. I don't speed. I, you know, I, I do try and uh, obey the rules of the road. But it's, it's more just this idea that everywhere you go now, someone's pointing a camera at you to try and catch you out for something. I, just, I really find it unpleasant. Bought this Arctic field ration with me today to eat. Seems it's winter. Though it's not exactly Arctic conditions out here, but I uh, haven't had one of these before. So it'll be interesting to try it, see what it's like gas stove today as I've run out of hexi tabs to use in my regular wood burning stove. It's 
need to get more of those. Got lamb stew, tortilla wrap Mexican style, protein bar, hot chocolate, disinfectant wipe, chewing gum, Ziploc bag, coffee. Mm. Cranberry protein bar, this hot chocolate I guess. Wipes and chewing gum and things. Hmm, those look quite nice. So that's the tortilla, it'll be interesting to try it. Spoon and stuff, Ziploc bag, energy drink thing, don't really like those but uh, yeah, the, the tortilla and the stew will be good. It's quite handy, it comes with a little Ziploc bag in there as well, so what I don't use I can put in there now that I've opened it up. The spoon that comes with it is very flimsy, I don't know if that would last very long, but I always bring my own anyway. I've got my tactical spork, so I don't need that. While I'm waiting for that to boil, I'll show you my new EDC knife I got recently. I used to use a Tool Logic knife, I think I've shown it in quite a few of my older videos. Uh, it's a really great knife, but it's not very UK legal, and the way things are now, I wouldn't want to risk getting caught out with it, so I thought I'd get a UK legal one. It's non-locking, just under three inch blade. But this is a Whitby lamb foot blade, and I've only ever had one lamb foot blade before. Uh, but that one, it was one I got for free actually, but the blade would only open to about there. And it was designed that way for safety reasons, but it's safety against you shanking someone rather than safety for you. So I never really felt that safe using it, because it always felt like it was going to flick down onto my fingers. But this one opens up nice and straight, very tight as well. There's a lot of friction there, so I'm no fear of this folding down on my fingers. This only cost me about £8 out of Go Outdoors. Um, so it's not a bad knife, it's only a cheap one, but for everyday use I find this uh, really handy and I actually prefer lamb's foot blades for everyday use over a more uh, spear tipped blade, just for what I use it for. The way the blade is sort of curving forward like that so I can get into things is really handy for me, so nice little everyday carry knife for the UK. Gone are the days where police had a bit of discretion, so if you were in the countryside using a fixed blade knife or a locking blade knife, they would, you know, turn a blind eye because they understood that you weren't out there to shank rival gangs or whatever. Nowadays, if you got caught with one, I can imagine the police would have a look of glee in their eyes that they could get you for something and they'd treat you the same way as they would some teen from London who was out, uh, you know, shanking rival gangs or whatever. Now with this you just pour the boiling water in the top, kind of like a pot noodle basically, and it uh, cooks it. Luckily I have my K-Bar tactical spork to use. Come get my stew! Alright, we'll see what this is like. Looks kind of gross, to be honest. But... Yeah, it tastes quite nice. One good thing about this, there's a lot of meat in it. Sometimes with these uh, MREs, ration packs and that, 
it can be a bit light on the meat. There's a lot in this, pretty much every spoonful has got some meat in it. So much like early March 2020, in a bit of a uh, high state prepper mode, just in case. I mean, nuclear war is pretty low down on the list, even though we are worryingly close to it. We're actually more at threat from cyber attacks attacking our financial and energy infrastructure. And just the general economy is going to be hit by it, so it's going to affect us all with food prices and fuel prices going up. A warning may come quite unexpectedly. If attack is imminent, you will hear the attack sound like this. You should now move yourself and your family to the safest area in your fallout room. That is, you should get inside your inner refuge and stay there. After two days, the danger from fallout will get less, but don't take any risks by contact with it. Listen to your radio. Stay where you are and keep listening to your radio. For further advice. We had a lot of heavy wind and storms in the UK a couple of weeks ago, so that's caused a lot of deadwood to fall, which is really handy for building a fire. And now I'm gonna build a bit of a windbreak as well to put behind the fire, uh, cause I don't like using fresh wood. I don't like cutting living wood from trees. So it's handy when there's a lot of deadwood laying around that's fallen. the uh, tortilla wrap it was palatable I guess it wasn't great lamb stew was alright though I've still got to have my cranberry protein bar see what it's like yeah it's not too bad the problem with these protein bars is they're loaded with sugar. You check the labels on a lot of these protein bars, they look like they'd be pretty good for you just as a little snack, but there's more sugar than there is protein in them. More apt to call them sugar bars. It's great seeing the nights gradually drawing out now. It's actually staying light quite late. So I hate how short the days are in winter. It feels like you've barely got enough time to do anything before it's dark. Yeah, things are going to get difficult now with, uh, I mean, we were already hit with the economy after the effects of the lockdown, let alone now this war that may or may not spread. It always used to annoy me when people, about 10 years ago, there was a phase where a lot of people say, we don't need Trident anymore, it's a waste of money having nuclear deterrence because we don't face traditional forms of attack anymore, it's all about terrorism. And these people didn't seem to realise that one of the reasons that we didn't face traditional forms of attack was because we had a nuclear deterrent. Uh, but I think most people are glad we still have it now. And a lot of people are saying that we should get more involved, you know, create a no-fly zone and all this, uh, but these people don't seem to realise quite how close we potentially are right now to World War Three. If we get too involved with it all, we can't, can't risk that. You know, it'd be a hell of a lot more lives lost 
if that happens. So that's why the government's acting so gingerly about uh, doing too much and getting too involved. It's so beautiful out here though. I've tried to get some shots to convey how beautiful it is. But it, it, it's never the same on camera, but it really does me good to get out here. Physically, it does me good, you know, it's uh, sawing the wood, walking out here, carrying the load. It's good exercise, and psychologically, it's great. It just feels good, like the fresh air, not being stuck in front of a screen, zoning out. It really is beautiful, I cannot wait for summer. I've been really in the mood lately to get out on the canoe. I put some rocks in the fire to absorb the heat, so even when the fire goes out, they'll give off heat for a while. It's always nice this time of year where you can start sowing seeds as well in the garden for the crop later in the year, if it's not totally irradiated. Honestly, anyone who hasn't watched it, go and watch Threads tonight. That'll get you in the mood for a nuclear apocalypse. I think after watching that you won't want to survive it because everywhere would just be irradiated the, the soil, all the animals, the water so it would be very difficult to find food not to mention the nuclear winter for a few years depending on how many nukes are dropped because of all the dust cloud and the fallout going up into the atmosphere so we'd have a few grey cold years making it very difficult to grow anything in the irradiated soil with the irradiated water. Uh, most electrics could potentially be destroyed by the EMP, electromagnetic pulse blast from the nukes going off. So that could set us back to the Stone Age with all our technology. And then you'd probably die in five to 10 years of radiation poisoning and cancer. So I think I would be tempted to just go and stand out in the open and let it land on me. But I don't think I would. I think, I think there'd always be that part of me that wants to try and survive as much as possible. It's just sort of human instinct, isn't it? But I don't think we've got too much to worry about. I think it'll pretty much all be fine. Uh, oh, shit.